Hey everybody, welcome to Small Town Music episode 4. Today we're going to be specifically talking about budgets and fundraising and money, um, especially because it is now the beginning, or towards the beginning of the fiscal year, which is, you know, January through December, so I know like our district budget has now been replenished and our, you know, that's a nice thing that we have. Um, so first we're going to kind of talk about like what kind of budgets there are in a school or in a, at least at our school, and um, kind of how much money we get for each. So first uh, big one is the district budget, which I'm pretty sure. So I think I get about $800 to $1,000 a year for 6 through 12 band on that district budget, which if you're a band director, if you've been a band director or a music teacher for any period of time, you know that that is such a cute, tiny little amount of money. <laughs> Yeah, I get about the same amount, um, which goes further uh, in choir. Typically, um, you know, when it t comes to just buying music, I know for me, you know, I can buy a set of music for my choir for about about seventy five dollars for a piece of music, and that usually includes, um, and that's if I'm buying the um, the like the accompaniment tracks to go along with it. Um, if I'm not buying accompaniment tracks, you know, I can get a new song for $30, uh, which means that my money can go further. Now, things that I do have to purchase with that money uh, might be like sound equipment, um, you know, new Bluetooth speakers, new microphones, and um, some of the things like that that might be better spent out of a different budget, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, so we also have an ECA budget or ECA fund, mm -hmm. which stands for extracurricular account. And that is, um, that's just money we put in there. That doesn't, like, nobody is putting money into that fund besides me. Like, sometimes if we get donations or checks or something from, like, certain sororities around the area or charitable organizations, sometimes that will put money in there. Or if there's just money, like, hey, we're going to save this for this special thing, then we're going to put it in here. I know we bought, like, recorders through that account because mm -hmm. then it's really easy to give our uh, treasurer the money and then have her deal with the receipts and, and handle all that. Yeah. The ECA, I think, is probably easiest if you're dealing with, like, student money for things like yeah. recorders and that sort of thing. It's just um, more, like, easy in, easy out, I think. Yeah. And then there's uh, capital project funds that sometimes we get, which are, like, classroom mm -hmm. furniture items, kind of, like, stationary things that aren't really going to um, leave. Yeah, so I didn't really know about this, actually. Whenever I started teaching, I didn't really understand that capital projects was a thing that I could take advantage of. And where I actually found out about it is whenever I needed a new keyboard for my classroom. I had an old Clavinova um, keyboard that still had a floppy disk in it, mm -hmm. and it was kind of being held together by shoe boxes. Like, it still is. <laughs> it was time. It was time for, for something new. Um, and I knew I did not have, you know, the $4,000 I needed to buy a new, uh, to buy a new piano, to buy a new, uh, electronic keyboard for my classroom. And so I had talked to my principal about it and he was like, oh, we'll just pay for that out of capital projects. Just, they wanted me to get a couple quotes from a couple different places. And then they were able to use their capital projects fun funds for that. Capital projects has to be used to spend, um, has to be spent on things that are non-consumable. Mm -hmm. So um, when they got new band chairs in the band yeah. room instead of the... You know, music stands, band chairs, yeah. uh, like music, I think I can kind of finagle sometimes. I've gotten like, even like little furniture items for my classroom. Like mm -hmm. I got like an organizing cart or like, mm -hmm. you know, like things like that. Um, I think yeah. I think I've gotten instruments through capital projects. It can be used for yeah. that. Anything that's long term. Like I know um, I don't think music can be because music is considered consumable. Right. Um, you know, like in the copyright world, you know, you are expected to have to buy new um, after a while because it is expected to right. go away. Um, I know that. So kind of backing up a little bit, ECA accounts, those extracurricular accounts, that is like specifically for student use. So like I can buy music through the ECA account. But I can't buy like a new trumpet through the ECA account or something mm -hmm. like that. Like it has to be that like all the students are going to use. So like I can use ECA account to pay for uniforms or marching shoes or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But I can't use um, ECA account for some of those other things. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of a question for your school secretary, or not secretaries, oh. school treasurer, uh, maybe the secretary too. But just kind of ask those questions like, hey, you know, 
what money do I have and where can I spend it? Mm-hmm. And that's always a really good question for them. And working closely with them is going to really benefit you and making sure, I don't know, bring them like a coffee every now and again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if, if they like you, then they're probably more willing yeah. to like kind of ask and poke around for some extra money for some things sometimes. For sure. Yeah. These are the people who really run the school. Janitors, um. secretaries, treasurers, <laughs> like all those, all those people. That yes. Like, so yeah. keep them on your good side for sure. <laughs> um, and then kind of the other one, um, not really related to school, but like I have a booster organization that we have like a band booster account, like bank account um, with a local bank that like is, you know, money that we've put in fundraising. Um, if people donate money. It goes there, or like any of our major fundraisers, the money goes into our Bloomfield Band bank account. So with choir, because we don't have to save up for new instruments, we don't have to save up for new uniforms, um, we choose to make it so that each of our kids buys their own their own choir outfit. Um, and in the past, we've and so I don't have to deal with that, like paying for that out of our account. Um, and so what our booster account is, is I do have some money. I charge the kids like a $20 participation fee, which is... Activity fee. Right. Um, you know, and that's just me on my own, on my own side of things, especially from, because again, all my choirs are extracurricular. So I can charge them that $20 fee, um, which helps pay for music and things like that. But then any of their fundraising, any other fundraising that they do is specifically for their choir account. And so my treasurer's track, like Johnny sold, you know, $15 worth of cookie dough. And so we track that Johnny has $15 in his account that then can be used to pay for his tux, to pay for his, um, his travel expenses or anything else that, that might come up as far as expenses on our side might go. Yeah, we use student accounts in the band side too. So we have like the general fund and then the student accounts, they're kind of separated. Mm -hmm. And um, if a kid graduates or quits, then that money can go directly to their sibling Mm -hmm. or it just goes in the general fund. Um, Mm -hmm. But the student accounts, they can pay for things like reeds, cork grease, valve oil, marching band shoes, marching band t-shirt. You know, if they have enough money, they could (laughs) buy a new instrument, I guess. you know, if they need a new essential elements book or whatever, you know, then they, they can do that with that band account, which I think a lot of them forget about that. <laughs> or they, you know, pay for our, our trip. When we get to high school band, the kids are allowed to go on the, on the big trip. Like this year, we're going to Universal or, you know, we've been to New York or whatever. So to, to help offset the cost, I tell them in sixth grade beginning band, you know, start, start putting money in your account now. Um, and then... You had, you wanted to talk about the endowment. Oh, so um, something that I'd never really thought about doing. Um, so we're actually in the process right now of trying to raise funds to build an auditorium for our school, which is huge. So um, we'll put the link <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> if you want to help us out. Um, right now, all of our performances are done in the gym. And uh, like we are, sure like some many of you, of you are, and we, we want better for our school. So we are currently um, in that process, but um, we actually set up a partnership with the Green County Foundation. So um, that is a foundation in our county that is solely dedicated to helping nonprofits. And by us setting up that partnership, um, we are also setting up an endowment. And so anything, um, kind of our plan B for the auditorium is that it would go into an endowment for the music department. And so even if you're not trying to raise money for an auditorium, I think an endowment's a really valuable thing for you to consider. If you're looking at the long-term health of your program, the long-term financial goals for your music program, is especially if you have willing donors. If you have people who want who want to help out, instead of thinking about, okay, what can I buy right now? Um, think about putting that money away, putting that money in an endowment that will grow. It's, um, it's an, their interest bearing accounts. And so they can sit and they can grow and they can accumulate and people can continue to donate to them. And then, you know, in 10 years, whenever, you know, you need to buy something, then you can just go and pull off of that. Um, and I think that's, that could be a really cool thing. If you have the means to get that set up for your program, uh, it'd be a really great way to, 
um, to bolster the money that you have at your disposal. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to transition to kind of talking about how to ask for money and then how to spend your money. So how to kind of like look at what you have. Um, so when I need uh, instruments, like percussion instruments, obviously pretty expensive. Like, you know, a good set of chimes is about a $7,000 chunk of money. Or um, a few years ago, they got new timpani because our timpani were just garbage. Like literal, sell them for scraps and get some money. <laughs> um, so I uh, I tried to kind of email just either at the beginning of the school year or if I remember like in January, you know, when the, the fiscal year begins and say like, hey, in the next couple of years, I would like to purchase marching bass drums, uniforms, chimes, you know, etc and and kind of have a list um when they know early especially if you're like looking at you know like oh we can limp by on these uniforms for a couple more years we can limp by on this you know bluetooth speaker or whatever this piano for a little while longer but in the next three years or so we should we should buy new then that kind of puts that in their minds of like money that they can set aside and then keep reminding them that you need those items because they one will forget and two other things will just crop up and and kind of get in the way um, because any organization the basketball team the soccer team the ag department you know the art department art we now have a maker space that has all these like 3d printers and laser cutter and you know, all this stuff they all need stuff too um so there's a lot of people but I think a lot of people kind of forget that like you can ask for things that are in advance. And my admin has told me several times like, hey, if you need something, you know, down the, you know, if you're thinking five years down the road, if you need something, let me know so then we can start putting money aside. So we are looking into replacing our marching uniforms. And one one thing that's helpful is that a school in the state um, has offered to let us buy their like coverall bibs. For marching band um they're used ones for a really 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 good price so ask around i know there's like a ton of band director facebook pages but ask you know ask band directors around the state and say hey like do you know anyone who's selling uniforms things like that that could be helpful um and then kind of start that process early i found out this year that like my school can pay for up to half of the uniforms like they can match the number instead of paying for the entire chunk, like they are allowed to like match the number. I don't know if that's every single school or every single situation, but that's just kind of a weird, like there's always weird rules about money and how much you can spend and when you can spend it and where you can spend it and all kinds of crazy things. You have anything to add? That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. I, well, I mean, like we've said, like, you know, um, the band world, has a lot more long-term things you usually have to plan for. So that's all true, um, you know, for things that we come across whenever you're talking about, um, you yeah. know, microphones, sound systems, things like that. Um, risers, but all, yeah. Risers, yeah. All the sort of same things uh, can stand true for that. Just to plan ahead, uh, don't expect them to be able to pull $10,000 out of a hat. Um, so plan ahead. Another thing to consider is make sure that it's when you let your superintendent know that you're going to have these needs, um, they can also turn you on to a lot of grants that mm -hmm. are possibilities as well. They get emails all the time about grants that are available. And so if they know that you're looking for money, they can forward those, those on to you. And then you can work on applying for those as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So how to spend your money. So, you know, like I said, in a good year, I'll get a thousand dollars for a six or 12 band. That goes by really quick. Like my first year of teaching, I was like, oh man, <laughs> I can do so much. So much And money. then I like repaired a clarinet and bought music for our band festival and was like, oh, it's gone. It's all gone. So I you know, kind of look at your yearly costs. Like there's going to be, so we have to buy music for our band festival every year. It's about three to five pieces depending on the year, depending on what music we already have in stock. And sometimes the band directors were willing to help each other out and that's mm -hmm. good. Um, so kind of look at that, like the things that you know you're going to have to buy. Like I know I'm going to have to buy at least a couple boxes of reeds for the kids. I know I'm going to have to buy, you know, a handful of pieces of music. And then like start looking at your instruments. Like for me as a band director, like I, I have, you know, these school and instruments that maybe the sousaphone hasn't been ever sent in. And, you know, you kind of take a look at it and you're like, oh, that's something's not right with that. Cool. Send the sousaphone in. Um, and kind of 
you know, guesstimate on the higher side of what that's going to cost. And then kind of look at what money is coming in. So what's your district budget? What fundraisers do you have? Do you need to add some fundraisers? Things like that. In your first year, it's kind of tricky. You're going to feel like you need to buy a lot of things and spend a lot of money. Um, but you can, you know, try to hold off, look at, look at what you absolutely need right at this moment versus what, what you will need, you know, maybe a couple years in the future. And then kind of look at, you know, the fundraising side of it. Yeah, I think with mine, I just try to, um, well, budget in a way. You know, I kind of try to ration as much as I can. Um, you know, I think about, okay, so I have three different choirs, and we do pretty much three sets of music a year. We do a fall, a Christmas, and a spring set of music. And I don't have enough funds to buy a new piece of music for every choir. For every, I mean, that'd be 15. Nine, there'd be nine new pieces of music, which mm -hmm. would take most of my budget <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Um, and so, it, yeah, so I just have to, I have to ration that. And I do have a pretty good music library I can go ahead and draw from um, and and get, a, and get by that way. Oh, I totally forgot what I was going to talk about. I can't remember. Oh, uh, another thing we haven't really talked about is we do also have an elementary where we also are in charge of the elementary music at our school. Um, and we do have a $500 district elementary yeah. budget, which is really helpful for, you know, if we need to buy some new classroom instruments, some new books, some new, um, repair something, repair whatever. something, yeah. new instruments, new program. Yeah. However, so that's another thing we do have at our disposal. Yeah. And you have a scholarship fund for choir kids. I do. So again, I, we do not... We do not buy the uniforms for our kids, uh, but I do believe very strongly, as I'm sure most of you do, that m money should never be a reason that a kid does not get to participate in music. Um, and in the same way that, you know, Katie has school-owned band instruments that kids can use, um, we have a scholarship fund that can purchase, uh, that can purchase uniforms for our kids. So... I always just, whenever I send out the price list of here, the things that you're going to need for choir this year, I always just put the note on there to say, uh, you know, we believe that m money should never be a reason that a kid cannot participate in music. If the cost of this is prohibitive, please let Mrs. Helms know by this date. And um, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I have any scholarship kids right now. I mean, cause we, I really try to keep the cost as low as possible. Um, you know, we'll reuse you know, costumes from year to year, um, you know, so we can try to fit things. But um, so it really doesn't necessarily take as much money as you would think it does. But that's a really important thing. And we usually feed that um, that program through the concession stand at our musical. So when we do our big fall musical, that's the one big fundraiser for our um, for our scholarship fund. That we do and i think that's a really important thing that we have in place that money is kept technically in our booster account um, outside of the school and we manage it through there yeah so now we're going to kind of talk about fundraisers to kind of supplement those accounts that are so tiny um so we do uh as a band we do you know the catalog sale the cheese and sausage with like they've got the cheesecake and the candy and the chocolate you know the whole the big century resources you know whatever it's called catalog sale we started doing a coffee fundraiser this year, um, and that's a really nice, it's custom fundraising, I think is the name of the company, but it, it's like a, a, a guy that kind of runs it by himself, and it's relatively small, so it's kind of nice to work mm -hmm. with that company, because uh, it's it, he, he sends me a lot of emails and say like, hey, how's it going? Do you need anything? Um, so finding those fundraisers are kind of nice, because the companies are, are really nice to work with. But it's, it's kind of unique. They print a label on the coffee bag that says, you know, has our, like, school, like, band, if we have, like, a specific band logo or whatever. And um, so that's that's kind of nice. It's, like, personalized coffee. And then, um, yeah, Laura, you have several different. We do. So, again, so that the kids can help, help build up their accounts. Yeah, these are for the accounts. This is not, like, for a general fund. Right. Um, but they would work for that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, totally. Um so we have a few big ones and then some smaller ones that get thrown in. Um, one of our best, longest term one term fundraisers we do is actually trash bags. 
Um, it's a company that is relatively local to us, and they're really good, strong trash bags. And I mean, we've been selling these trash bags for like 30 years now, and uh, and they've been a really good seller. We have people who, once their kid graduates, then you know, then they're calling me saying like, "Hey, who can I buy my trash bags from?" Like they they have a loyal fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have the trash bags. We do um, Otis Spunkmeyer cookie dough sales. It's like the preformed frozen um, balls of cookie dough. I have people all the time asking about those. Um, we've done the five gallon buckets of laundry detergent, which was relatively successful. However, we have we've kind of started. There's been several other community um, organizations that have started also doing that fundraiser. So we've kind of backed off of it because we kind of lost some interest because people had already bought their five gallons of laundry soap and how many five gallons buckets of laundry soap does does one one really need (laughs) yeah i still have mine from like five years ago (laughs) um you know so uh so the cookie dough the um the trash bags we sell poinsettias we have a local nursery uh just here in our town that orders poinsettias for us, and so it's it's a really nice partnership for both us and for and for them, and then we use those poinsettias to decorate our gym for the Christmas concert, which it looks really nice. Makes a beautiful display when you're trying to convert a gym into an auditorium. And then after the concert's done, they line up and take them home. And they take them home and they deliver them. And we usually do our concerts usually around the first weekend of December. So people still have them in plenty of time for the Christmas season to give them out. So yeah. Poinsettias, Poinsettias is a good one. Cookie dough. Um, we sell uh, parking for, we have a, we have a local apple festival that is, that takes place near our school. And so we actually team up with the athletic department on that one and they staff the parking lots one day. We do another day and then split the profits down the middle, uh, which is, uh, which is, turns out to be really good. We usually end up making seven or $800 out of a day, day. you know, of, you know, sitting and taking money. I mean, literally, you know, you just have to show up, uh, kind of work. Um, we, we've done so many little ones, but those are definitely the ones I would say are our biggest one. One that's become more and more popular is the snap raise, Mm -hmm. which is essentially like crowdfunding. It's, it's like GoFundMe kind of, uh, for schools. And they were great to work with. They're very hands-on, um, very involved. Uh, I will say for us, it did not work great. I think just our small town community, just community, like the way it is, yeah. You know, the, they didn't really get into it as much as maybe a larger community might have. Um, so I didn't go back to that. And they also take their, you know, they take their percentage off the top. So. Um, I probably won't do that one again. However, um, if you believe that you have a community that would be really into online giving, uh, then that's check nice. out Snap Race. That's nice because then you don't have to buy things. Like you don't, you're not trying to push right. products people don't really right. want, you know, on people. <laughs> For sure. Um, so some other types of fundraisers. So we have like the one catalog fundraiser, and yeah, we we've, we've kind of liked done a clothing fundraiser once or twice, mm-hmm. and it hasn't really. It's done okay, and it was more like, oh, I just want some Bluefield band shirts, so mm-hmm. let's do let's do a clothing fundraiser. Um, but we, the band does really well with, um, we have a taco in a bag stand at our basketball games. So every home basketball game that the band plays at, including the girls games, we sell taco in a bag and people love it. Like they get real upset if the tacos are not there. Like last year because of COVID, we didn't sell them. And people, like, every time they're like, man, I really want some tacos. Well, you sold out Friday night. Oh, yeah. We sold out. It was chaos. It was, it was like, before halftime of the varsity game, they sold out. We were, we had no more tacos. We had zero tacos. Chaos. Chaos. The kids were livid. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's a, it's pretty good fundraiser. I mean, you eat a little bit of the cost. (laughs) Fun intended. Um, when you buy products, I, I try to have parents donate the products, and they're they're pretty good about it. Sometimes we have to, you know, pay for our own. We have a parent, like, make the taco meat, which is kind of fun. Um, but that's a pretty good fundraiser for us. We do a silent auction at our spring concert, which uh, we get donated items, and then we keep 100% of the proceeds um, from the silent auction. And that can raise its – I think at our highest, it was a little over $1,000 which is a pretty decent chunk of money. Um, 
We also have a local ice cream place come down and sell ice cream at our concert, which is a, a pretty decent fundraiser. We get like a dollar for every pint of ice or a little cup of ice cream sold or something, which is close to like two to three hundred dollars, depending on you know how many kids buy ice cream at the right. concert. Right, and for zero work, like and, you, yeah, you just I, call I, them and say, "Hey, show up." I email the guy and I'm like, "Hey, this is when our concert is. Can you show up?" And he really enjoyed. Like he emailed back and was like, "Hey, yeah, like we love doing this for you guys." <laughs> I was like, "Great, here's some more <laughs> concerts. Come on down." Um, so. I think the biggest thing with fundraisers is there's there's a million and one fundraiser ideas. Like we can talk, you know, we can spend five episodes talking about different fundraisers. Absolutely. But the biggest thing is to find your niche in your community. Mm -hmm. If you're, let's say, the basketball team always sells strawberries, don't sell strawberries. Right. If, you know, you know, talk on a bag, that's a big thing. My high school band, we sold butter braids. That was like we like lived for the butter braid. Like the butter braid guy showed up and we were delighted. And like my mom would buy like ten of them. And it's like, it's just like what, it's what we did. And it's what, you know, made us, made us money. And, and maybe it's like, like, I know some schools do like a magical dinner and it's like this beautiful production that they put on, but then it's also this really big fundraiser, you know, again, like find what works for your, your community and your band. I know my brother, um, who's also a band director, he literally begs for money in the street. He has kids like dressed up in their marching band uniforms and with parents holding buckets and they're like, give us money for our band. He lives in a much bigger town than I do. So it works a little bit better, but I don't know, maybe you have like a local shopping center or a, a hot, a hot place to go and, mm -hmm. and maybe that will work for you. I don't know. You, you kind of got to figure it out. Um, some of these things I inherited. So talk on a bag has been like a, like decades, right. decades long tradition. Silent auction was started by the person before me. And it, it's a really enjoyable thing. Um, yeah, so you just you just gotta just gotta find what works for you and what what's gonna be best. I know fundraising is like not <laughs> the most fun thing to do, but unfortunately, like if you want to have instruments, if music equipment, you know, mm -hmm. speakers, risers, and and I guess I just want to add one thing. I mean, like fundraising can be really uh, overwhelming for the director to have to manage all this, like. This is where delegating can be really helpful. Get a parent to run a fundraiser mm -hmm. for you. Like I have, I have a mom who is has been in charge of the cookie dough fundraiser for years at this point. Her kids have graduated and right. she's still in charge. I had, <laughs> I had her three boys all go through my program. They have all graduated at this point, and she's still like, I'll keep doing the cookie dough fundraiser. Oh, yeah. Like, let me know if you want someone else to do it. I'm like, oh no, please right. keep going. <laughs> I think it's also like you got to reach out individually yeah. to parents. Like if you don't have someone, so like right now I kind of have my one, uh, my treasurer, my band treasurer. She's like also the president and in charge of Taco <laughs> Bag and in charge of this and in this. Because it's just like it's, we've just lost parents over the years and lost interest in COVID. And, you know, like mm -hmm. let's name the thing that people have dropped for. But um, it's kind of reaching individually mm -hmm. out to those people yeah. that like, hey – would you like to help us out with this? And, mm -hmm. and typically they kind of find their niche. They kind of find like, oh, that's the one thing that this right. parent's going to do. And that's really helpful. If you have like, this parent runs talk on a bag, this parent runs mm -hmm. silent auction, this parent runs, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Like in that way, that's their thing. It's not hard to do, but it's something that you then don't have to do. So please take advantage of your people and yep. get someone to run those for you. All right, if you have questions, please email us at small dot, no, smalltownmusicpodcast small <laughs> at gmail.com. Instagram, small.townmusic. TikTok, smalltownmusic. Um, <laughs> YouTube, smalltownmusic. Podcast. Because it's, it's, it's Google. Podcast. Okay. It's Google. It's Google. It's Google. Google mail. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, if you like, start typing small town music. Mm -hmm. We should pop up. Yeah. Or just comment yeah. on the video or or if you're listening, yeah. Like and come subscribe. find us. Like and subscribe. Um, and let us know. Let us know what you want to know about. Tell us about you. Uh, and we'll love to respond and see how we can help you out. All right.